get a call. Okay, let's call this meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals to order. My name's Ellis Jacobs. I'm not the normal chair. The normal chair, he's not really that normal, but <laughs> the usual guy isn't here. Um, so I'll do the best I can. So if it runs a little bumpy, you'll forgive me. <laughs> the next time he's not here, it'll go smooth. <laughs> All right, we are, um, so we're called to order, and if you would take the roll. Yes, Jacobs. Here. Harry. Here. Bryant. Here. Also present is Tamara Ennist, who is the Planning and Zoning, uh, my gosh, I always mess that up. Administrator. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and we are expecting Steve Kahn at any moment. Oh, okay. And we do have some minutes that we need to approve, but because Steve is needed to approve the minutes, we'll just wait on that and move right to the uh, substantive matters before us today. And why don't we start out with uh, the one that is on the top in my packet, which would be the 108 South Walnut Street, uh, the application by uh, Bob Sweeney. Right, this is an application uh, for a request for a variance, and it's a variance to the Village of Yellow Springs Zoning Code Section 1282.04A1, non-conforming building of structures, to, in order to allow a reduction to the established rear yard setback distance for the construction of an enclosed patio. Um, the property is uh, at 108 South Walnut Street. It's within the RC High Density Residential District, and it's owned um, by Susan and Robert Sweeney. And um, Mr. Bob Sweeney's here in the audience today, and he'll be, um, you know, able to give you any information you ask for. Um, the property is lot 39 of the Yellow Springs subdivision. It's located on the west side of South Walnut Street and it's a second property south of Dayton Street. The irre irregular shaped lot contains 4,108 square feet, approximately one-tenth of an acre, and has 69 feet of street frontage and a lot depth that varies from 43 to 74 feet. The existing one-and-a-half story residential structure covers approximately 1,534 square feet of the lot with a decorative um, refurbished outhouse covering another approximately 25 square feet of the site for a total of about 1,559 square feet of lot coverage. And that equals just under 40% of lot coverage. According to the site plan, the closest point of the building to the rear yard measures 10 and a half feet. The Yellow Springs Zoning Ordinance identifies zoning regulations for residential districts and requires, in that zoning district, it requires a minimum lot area of 4,800 square feet, a minimum lot frontage of 40 feet, and allows for a maximum 50% lot coverage. Uh, this being an existing house, it would, you know, it's, it's complying with the, the square footage and with the, the frontage. And it also complies with the maximum lot coverage because it's, it's you know, under the 50%. The minimum yard setback requirements are 20 feet for a front yard, 5 feet for side yards, and 15 feet for the rear yard. Uh, because the structure, which was built in 1900, does, does not meet the minimum setback requirements of the current zoning code, the structure is identified as a non-conforming structure. Non-conforming structures cannot be enlarged or altered to increase the non-conformity except in cases in which the setback of the structure is non-conforming by 50% or less of the distance required by uh, this, the zoning code. In this case, the non-conforming setback may be extended along the same plane as the existing non-conforming setback. So in other words, um, I would be able to write a permit at my desk and, and issue that permit if um, he was, you know, were to extend the plane just, you know, in parallel to where the house is sitting right now. Okay. The applicant would like to enclose an existing patio, and in doing so, the overhang would extend an additional one foot into the established ten and a half feet rear yard setback distance. He is asking for a variance to Zoning Code Section 1282.04A1 for that purpose. So, in other words, you know, if it were a brand new house being built in that, that district, he would have to have um, a 15-foot rear yard setback. But because the house was built at a time when this zoning code didn't exist or a different zoning code applied, you know, it was built to where the, the, the angle of the house comes out to 10 and a half feet from the property line. And that in itself establishes the, the rear yard. 
so the 15 foot rear yard really doesn't apply for this lot um, because it's um, he's, he's enclosing a, the patio to be a three season room and because of the overhang it would extend another one foot into that established rear yard and um, there's the, the variance um, criteria uh, that, that you all are familiar with and staff recommends that you just review the application and carefully consider the variance request and Mr. Sweeney's here if you'd like to ask him any questions about okay. that. Uh, let's uh, first note that Mr. Khan has joined us. Yes, with Welcome. apologies. No problem. Uh, and uh, Mr. Sweeney, do you want to add anything? Um, uh, you need to come forward to the microphone. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you have any questions, Say that I into the microphone. Um, I guess the reason I'm asking for a foot is. Uh, the, both the house and the garage are set at an angle to one another and it was really hard to actually build anything in there to get it to fit right so uh, this was this is the most logical solution to it I mean I could hack off a foot and you know make it a foot smaller um, but there would be some foundation issues with that and some post issues so it just makes it much easier to ask you than to make it smaller Okay. Questions for the applicant or for Tamara? Can you just describe it, the patio already exists? Yes. And so you're enclosing it with a, a roof. A roof with one foot so it'll drain off and not into your coffee uh, when it yeah. rains. Um, so what is that patio right now? Is it a is it it's a brick? It's brick. It's yeah. It's and a is brick it structure. Elevated or is it right at ground level? It or? is actually slightly below grade. Okay. Um, there's a perimeter wall, a stone wall, maybe 18 inches high. And that's, that is really the reason that we'd like to extend it further is because to get a post in, uh, we'd like to extend it beyond that stone wall of which there's no substantial foundation under it. No, no foundations required for it because it's only mm -hmm. 16 mm -hmm. or 18 inches tall. It might okay. be 24 at the highest spot. Um, currently, the, all of the, there's, for a very small house, um, there may be 11 different roof planes on yeah. this house now. So it was really yep. a difficult solution to get no, the roof I, back I, in there. And I'm looking at our, at our plans here and it, it really looks like a Lego project. Yeah, yeah the house was actually, I, I think the house <laughs> is pre-1857. It was on the, it was there before the town was plotted. So yeah. uh, it does, actually the house itself extends into the public right of way in the alley. So right. um, yeah. nothing square anywhere. So you sure you don't want to just start all over again and just, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, not my, it's not my nature. No, I like to keep, you know, I like to, I like to keep things the way they are and make them better if I can. So, no, I don't like to tear things down. I used to do historical renovation down the Oregon District mm -hmm. 30 years ago. Great. Thanks. I'm sensitive to that. And in Cincinnati, I did houses as well. Any other questions? Uh, I have a... Um, Question that just might be a clarification for uh, perhaps for Tamara if, she, if uh, you've got a better handle on this. But just looking at the um, uh, Green County GIS, which I understand has, like all of these, will have a right. disclaimer that it's a graphic representation and not a, uh, a sort of deed. But I, I'm curious about those the way that those property lines don't uh, agree with the, the apparent property or even the alleyway there. Right. Well, I was wondering where actually is the benchmark mm -hmm. that is being used to establish mm -hmm. the setback in this case? Mm -hmm. I might be able to answer that. The I know mm -hmm. when they when I purchased the property, there was a, a lot plot done by a surveyor, and, and actually the neighboring house, the 106, does sit on my property. It, it's over. Oh, that, that, uh, that originally, the, these uh, originally this property was all one was one piece of property. Okay my house and the house at the corner of Dayton Street and uh, Walnut. Mm -hmm. And then sometime prior to my buying it, I think the purchase of, or purpose, person who owned it prior to me uh, had purchased, someone had separated the lot and done that. So that explains that lot now. And I and I am confident also that my house on the other corner where the alley is, that the house does sit into the public right away on that alley. So these lines are probably pretty close. The whole thing might move a little shift a little south due to the angle of photography but it's mm -hmm. it's pretty close um, 
there's nothing. Maybe the front of the house is parallel to Walnut Street, and that's the only plane that is. You can see that the garage is not even square to Walnut Street or to, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. any, any, anything, anywhere. And just to uh, expand on that, the, um, the Greene County GIS mapping site, it's, it's a great tool to use, but you have to use it with a rule of, you know, just some, you know, caution because what happens is this is a, a CAD system, so there's layer upon layer upon layer. So the surveys are placed, you know, as one layer, and then when they, they fly the aerials, um, you know, the orthos, um, those are then placed over that, and, and, and it's a lot of times they are not completely accurate. And so uh, you'll find that a lot of times, but um, you, you can use it as a rule of thumb, but you cannot go by that. Mr. Sweeney just happens to know where his rear property line is for sure. Um, otherwise, you know, the, there's, there's some, you know, the orthos themselves tend to be curved in nature. You know, so when they put these layers down, it doesn't always match up. So, um, and there is some gradation there too. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're coming down an elevation from the left side of the photograph to the right. Mm -hmm. So that's going to add some little shift in trying to put a flat plane on it as well. Mm -hmm. And then also, like he said, this this house was built a long time ago, and it, it, at that time, you know, they they weren't maybe as they didn't have the instruments maybe, and they didn't you know have the the zoning codes to have the setbacks and. Um, well, the house predates the plotting of the town. It was there right. pre-1857. So. Right. Um, the only other thing I would add is the actual area of which I want to encroach <laughs> over my ten and a half feet is a triangle and it's yes. about a foot by about three feet. So, mm -hmm. yep. okay. Okay. All right, great. Any other questions? Uh, we should ask whether there's anybody, any neighbors or anybody from the community that wants to comment on this. Doesn't look like it. Okay, thanks. Um, do we need to discuss it or are we ready to vote? I'm ready to I'm vote. I'm ready to vote. Okay. Dan? Okay. Um, so I think the way we do this is that we march, we take the long march through yes, the do. eight points, <laughs> and then we end up with the final thing at the, the end, right? Disclaimers. Voting yeah or nay. Okay. So I'll do my darndest to state the eight points uh, one at a time. Um, does the property in question yield a reasonable return, or can there be beneficial use without the variance? Are, are no. you doing this as a roll call? I can't now remember. Well, and uh, the way that you've normally done it, and we might as well just stick with that protocol, is that you, you will take a motion to approve the variance petition as, it, as submitted or however you want to do that, and then you get your second, and, and then you march on through, and then you do the final roll, roll call. But I do call roll to each question, yes. Oh, okay. very good. Let's do it that way. Good. So I, uh, I'd like to move that we um, approve this uh, variance request as presented. I'll second it. Okay. Discussion? All right. Okie dokie. So now we're ready. Uh, we'll, we'll do this uh, thing. Number one, does the property in question yield a reasonable return, and can there be beneficial use without the variance? Yes. Steve? Yes. 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 Okay. Is the variance substantial? No. 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 Will the essential character of the neighborhood be substantially altered, or will adjoining property suffer substantial detriment as a result of the variance? No. Nope. No. Nope. No. Will the variance adversely affect the delivery of governmental services such as water distribution, sanitary sewer selection, collection, electric distribution, stormwater, or refuse collection? Nope. 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 No. no. Will the property, did the property owner purchase the property with knowledge of the zoning restriction? <laughs> you know, I think this is, this is a not applicable. I mean, this is a, a property that predates the platting of the town. I think that we're, we're, we're in deep metaphysical zoning waters here. <laughs> so I'm going to abstain. <laughs> Bring it well, down. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm caught up with the idea that everybody does everything with full knowledge of all the laws, which is a legal fiction, but <laughs> I feel but the you need. Live by it. But I live by it. Yeah, that's <laughs> correct. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say yes. I, I yes. wonder if it, yes. would, if it would be worth asking a question. Has the revised zoning code, have the revisions borne any differently on this property than previously? Not, not particularly. The, the setbacks in the previous code may have been 
the same or different, but as far as the non-conforming structures, that's pretty been that, that, that the section states pretty, pretty standard. Mm -hmm. So I would say yes in that case. Did you get to weigh in on this one? He said, yeah. He you said, said yes. yes. Yeah, I said yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Number six uh, is the property owner's predicament feasibly obviated through some method other than a variance? No. 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 I'd say yes. But okay. Uh, whether the existing conditions from which a variance is being sought were self-created? No. No? No. No. Whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance? Yes. 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 Okay, so then the question stated is, after weighing the factors described above and any other factors we've deemed relevant, uh, does the property has the property owner shown practical difficulties so inequitable as to justify the granting of the variance to the property owner? So if you vote yes on this, you're saying yes, grant the uh, yes, variance. Yes. 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 Okay. Good. There we are. So okay. let me just, I'm just going to call roll officially, officially, and then you're good to go. So on the question of the motion to Grant the variance as submitted. Um, Con. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Harry. Sorry. We <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we don't forget. Let's go back and get the uh, the minutes. Now that Steve's here, we were waiting on the minutes. I'm sorry uh, about that. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as uh, we have them in front of us? These are the Wednesday, May 7, 2014 minutes. I make the motion to approve it. I'll second the motion. All right. Um, uh, any discussion? No changes? Anything like Are there changes? I don't think so. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Two and Dan, I think you're abstaining. You are abstaining. Am I abstaining, or you were actually? I'm represented uh, in the minutes. at the table, but not able to vote at that meeting. So oh, okay. Uh, okay. We've got the three of you. Okay. Thank okay. you. So the minutes are approved. Okay. Then moving on to the second item of business for tonight, which is the uh, application of for 634 Omar Circle, and the applicant is is it Alice Earl Jenkins? Am I pronouncing it, mm -hmm. pronouncing it correctly? Alice? Okay. Hi, Alice. All right. Um, oh, sure. Tamara? All right. This is um, a second request for a variance. Um, it's a variance to the Village of Yellow Springs Zoning Code, Section 1248.03a, the table, which was uh, uh, states the dimensional requirements for residential districts. Um, this variance is requested in order to allow a reduced side yard setback distance for the construction of a one-car garage on the north side of the principal residential building. The location of the property is 634 Omar Circle, and the zoning district is RA, low density residential, and the applicant and the owner of the property is Alice Earl Jenkins. The um, applicant is requesting relief from the strict requirements of the zoning code as they apply to this uh, yard depth within the RA district and the request is to reduce the side yard setback requirement from 10 feet to 3 feet to allow construction of a one car garage on the north side of the existing structure. This property is lot number 25 of the Omar Park Estates Section 2 subdivision. It's located on the west side of the street on the west end of the Omar Circle right of way and the lot contains 10,625 square feet, approximately 0.244 acres, and it has 85 feet of street frontage and a lot depth of 125 feet. The existing one-story ranch-style residential structure is 56 feet wide and contains 1,765 square feet, covering approximately 16.6% of the lot. According to the site plan, the current location of the building provides a 40 feet front yard setback, a 47 feet rear yard setback, a 15 feet north side yard setback, and a 14 feet south side yard setback. The current structure does not contain a garage because previous owners converted the original garage into a family room. 
Um, the current owner utilizes the family room on a daily basis and reverting it back into a garage would negatively alter the interior layout. She would like to add an attached garage in order to access her vehicle without being subjected to the elements. The um, variance criteria are that um, in that zoning district, the uh, RA zoning district requires a minimum lot area of 7,500 square feet and a minimum lot frontage of 60 feet and allows for 35% lot coverage, which as you could see from uh, the previous um, reading that it that meets all that. The, um, the minimum yard setback requirements are 25 feet for the front and rear yards and 10 feet for the side yards with a total side yard setback of 25 feet. The requested seven feet variance would reduce the north side yard setback to three feet and the total side yard setback to 17 feet. The 324 square foot one car garage addition would increase the lot coverage from 16.6 .6 to 19.7 percent. So the coverage would be well within the uh, allowed 35 percent. The um, staff recommends that, um, that you review the application and consider the variance request. Uh, one area of concern and something that you might want to mention would be the drainage that should be addressed for that north side as <coughs> far as the storm water not being directed on the neighboring property uh, when the lot's graded for the new structure. Uh, uh, Tamara, are there any uh, governmental services that run between the, the two <coughs> lots? Um, no, the, uh, there's an electric um, line that runs along the rear property line. Yes, above ground power poles. Okay. Um, do we want to hear from the applicant and, uh, or her representative and then ask questions? Is mm -hmm. that the best way to do this? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Um, I don't we have Alice, Richard. Are you going to have Richard speak Richard's for you? Richard's here. Yeah. Yeah. You sure yeah. you want to do that? Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> we could be here a while. <laughs> We're just kidding. Okay. I'll, I'll say something after he does. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So I'm Richard Zoff. Um, I know, I, Alice is not a close friend, but I've known her for a number of years. And she actually, when she first got involved in this project, asked me to establish for sure where the property lines were, which is one of the services that I provide here in Yellow Springs. And in the process of doing that, she told me, she just, it's hard for her to stand up in, in front of an august body like this. <laughs> <laughs> give it a shot myself and I said well <laughs> um, anyway I think that Tamara gave you the gist of this the although this house originally had a garage it hasn't for a long time the previous owners walled up the garage door and completely remodeled the interior to make it part of the living space um, you you all remember last winter it was a little harder than usual to deal with a car that was parked in the driveway and that was what Alice had to do. So she said, all right, can I build a garage? And I looked at the property and said, well, no. <laughs> Based on the, on the current zoning, there just is not enough room to do it, no matter where we, we try to put it. Um, but that it, if she were to talk to a builder and get the minimum dimensions for an attached garage to the house, then we could come before you and see if, if, if you thought it was reasonable to build that garage. Um, the, what, and that, that's, that's the gist of this. Um, the one issue that was brought up about storm drainage, in this case, it's a, it's a standard building with, with slope roof and gutters, and those downspouts, there's no problem in directing those away from the adjacent property. But, uh, property slopes down towards Omar Circle, and so the water can come out to the stormwater collection system at the street. Um, I can walk through the same points that you walk through if you would like me to. I don't but, think it's necessary. But I didn't, right yeah, I, was, just I, see I figured that wasn't necessary yeah. since you were all going to do it, but if any questions come up about any of those, I'd be happy to address them. Um, and I guess the other thing to s well, we had two other pieces of information. I, Alice just said she wanted to, to give her two cents. Also, we have neighbors here who would, who would or could be impacted by, by this project. And my understanding is that they are comfortable with the variance in the, in the building of the garage. Um, okay. Are there any questions right now that I might answer? Do you want to go ahead and hear from Alice and the neighbors, and then we can get all the questions out at once? Does that make sense? 
Yeah, let's sense. do that. Sure. Okay. You all did get copies of the letters then yes. to, from the neighbors I have, also. I have two we had we had two letters here right. from right. neighbors. Yes. You had, yep. to, you had to come up to the uh, microphone and say your name. Yeah. I haven't done this in a few years. That's all right. That's okay. Put it there. Just state your name. My name is Alice Earl Jenkins, and I live next door to Teresa Green. And uh, when I decided that it was a little difficult for me uh, this past winter and that I wanted to have a garage, uh, I talked. I told her I was thinking about it, and her daughter and her son. And so, uh, what I planned, what I planned to have, uh, Teresa's um, house, as I said, is on the north side. And so, I want the garage to start about four feet back from my north wall, and that way, her window it will not obstruct her view from her window. And that's why I wanted to do that. And we, uh, I forget now, Richard, the, the, uh, but anyway, we, we, the end of the garage will stop before the electrical meters so that we don't have to worry about digging or doing anything there. And in the garage will also have a door into my house so that I can come from my house to the car and not have to um, worry about cleaning uh, the car from the snow. I had um, hip surgery in uh, January uh, 2013. And so this winter, I was always very nervous having to go out there and, and, and take care of the car and get out. Um, as was mentioned, the house was, um, had the, the steels, I think there were steels who lived there, they had remodeled the house, and so I just accepted that. And I was much younger then. I've been in the house since 1985, and now it's a little more difficult for me uh, to do some of the things that I had been doing. So this way I can walk out of the garage into my house and not be concerned about the elements. Um, and I will, um, we will, I will be very concerned about the grading because the lot that where I am is the lowest lot in that area. So I get water coming from uh, the house behind me and from the house from the south of me. And so um, I, um, I had a uh, underground drain with the different holes, uh, pots around the backyard, so that um, my backyard wouldn't flood. Because um, I didn't realize that until after I'd been in the house for a while, and the water was coming almost up to the patio, and I thought, well, I need to do something about that. And do you have any questions you want to ask me? Questions? I don't. I don't have any questions? No. Shall we, shall we hear from any neighbors there or any, anybody else that would like to speak? Um, I just have one. Do you mind standing up? And I'm Sorry to make it so <laughs> You've got to give us your name and, and address, too. It's your moment on television. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Cecilia Green, and I live um, uh, two houses from my mother. And I'm kind of here talking on behalf of her also. Um, we discussed what uh, Alice wanted to do. I discussed it with my two brothers and with her. And we were in agreement of um, giving her that extra uh, seven foot variance. And I wrote a letter, uh, well, her and I, for the both of us, uh, for you guys. Um, the one main concern that I had was there is a sewer cap at the back of my mother's yard that's right by the utility pole and and I didn't really think about this until we were just you guys were talking about the drainage but I was wondering with that new structure is there enough room if a utility truck or someone needs to get past the garage 
to get to that sewer cap if they need to dig, drain it out or dig it out or whatever they might have to do back there. The because we have a tree, although we cut the tree limbs back, mm -hmm. but can it still get, can the truck still get through there to get back to that cap? I don't know, but I think so. Uh, because trucks have come through there before. And this wall will not go beyond the, the, fence. the fence. But it's closer to where the tree is, even though we've cut the tree back, I just, just to make sure that they don't knock the huge tree down just to get back to the sewer cap. Yeah. I don't know about that. It, I, I guess it kind of depends on the how careful they are. Height, <laughs> the, height, the height of the truck. So they right, can vary. Right, right now there's a fence between the two properties, is that correct? It's on the back half, yeah. On, on the, the back. back. Side okay, but not on the side where the garage is going in. There's no fence. The garage stops where the fence begins, mm -hmm. and then the fence goes all the way to the back. Mm -hmm. And the, the fence sits inside her yard, from right. the property yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So. And there is a manhole back there. Yeah. On this map, where's this? It, where's this located? The back. Um, well, when almost you're, in the back corner. It would be the. You know, if you, this is the north side, so it's back here in the rear yard. There's a, a power pole back there, and a. Oh wait, here's. Yeah. So. I did. I forgot about that. It's back here. It's back here. Can I can't tell. Uh, Richard, I've got a map here. Hey, Richard. He's asking about the easements on the property. Approach the bench. Um, yeah. <laughs> Can you show me where this uh, is? Such a this way. proposed because the garage is going to be a right. Yeah. Here. Where's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Here, the <laughs> Elmore Circle. Here. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know still exactly. Still gonna be it's somewhere back back here. This manhole. Oh, that I see. So, so where's the street? This is the fence that they're that, referring that line to. Right there. That, this fence oh. is in existence. Oh, okay. The garage yeah. isn't going to stick out. Here. It, the fence is, is about, I think, about five feet off the property now. You can see the, the tree. The garage will stick yeah, out but it's an aerial, two so feet. It's a so hard to know. this right. has been here all this time. Back. It hasn't caused any problem to any house. Oh, well, so oh, okay. That's okay. I mean, we we started off with the question about whether this impedes. There are no right of ways. No, that's what I was checking. I was asking is the village doesn't. If the village needs to get there, they're right away along back. the backyard. Yeah, well, but that's normally right, you don't yeah. have to get a truck into a mail. That's what I was going to say. This is probably the same not a truck yeah. problem. You, you do a, something a some other yeah. system. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. okay. 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 Let's, uh, let's all come okay. together here. Um, so if the truck could fit between. I don't think the truck Thanks, Richard. Fit. Richard, thank you. Okay. Let, me, let me call us back to order. Charge here. Let me bring us back to order because. From the standpoint of trying to run the public meeting, we need to make sure that just one thing at a time gets said so everybody gets to hear it and we all share the oh, same information. On. I know. I know. It's, it's so on Yellow Springs. But uh, <laughs> so did you have any further comments on the manhole question? No. Or on any other question? No. That was just my thought after you guys were talking about drainage. Okay. I thought, well, how will a truck get back there? Okay, fine. Anybody else want to comment? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Come forward. State your name. I'm Paul Abendroth. I'm neither a neighbor nor do I oppose your approving this, but I want to remind you the factor number four, delivery of government services, that you should always consider fire protection. In this case, you can get fire equipment as well as fire personnel behind the building if needed, but in some of the uh, issues that you are presented with uh, firefighting is an issue. So if you make a note, maybe when, when you review this item, whether uh, fire prevention, fire control can be uh, accomplished. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Paul. Paul, is it your thought that that's not a, a concern, a practical concern in this situation? Correct. Okay, thank you. And did the applicant want to respond to the manhole question, or Richard, do you? Well, Okay. Very briefly, there was, there was a time where it was, was popular to put the utilities along the backyards of houses. Everybody has since learned that it's almost impossible to maintain them when they're back there because you can't get equipment in. The village climbs the poles instead of bringing their trucks in, 
the, the, usually the only reason that you would need to get into a sanitary sewer manhole was with, if there was a blockage in the system and, and you had to clean it, but it's, it's possible to do that remotely. It doesn't have to require bringing in a huge truck up to that spot. And there has been no history of problems in this particular area that, I, that I'm aware of. So I, um, but it's, it's graciousness <laughs> that allows that equipment in. You, you can think about other parts of town where the setback requirements are as little as five feet and there was no way to get a truck in. And the setbacks weren't designed to give utility access. Easements are for that purpose. So I, I don't believe that you have a responsibility to maintain an opening. And the other side of the house still yes. has the full 15 feet. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. While we've got uh, Richard up uh, before you go, I, I, I know you've been, uh, you, you know the village better than I do in many ways, but I, I was curious looking at this application on its face about the difference between the property um, designation and as it's recorded in GIS and as you guys have represented it here, are there clear benchmarks that you were able to establish in this case? Three out of four, okay, and the that the fact that the, the two side lot lines are parallel and that the house was square to the lot, I could measure off the house to, to establish the one corner that wasn't in existence. I, when I come out to locate property lines, I only do it by measurement. I don't do a full down to the eighth of an inch survey. But I had no question in this case. And in fact, the auditor's office says that the house is 56 feet wide and it's only 55 feet wide. And there's, there's actually 15 feet on either side. It's, it's plunk in the center of the oh, lot. Okay. But yeah, I have, I have no doubts about, about where the boundaries are in this case. Okay. I, I mean, I think they had drawn it on the, the GIS system more favorably, actually. So right. it, it, it seemed like you were correcting yeah. to, with, with some sort of honest yeah. reference. I have to tell people all the time that it's an indication that it's ne you never want to scale off that drop. Never. Okay, any further questions for Tamara, the applicant, or any of the neighbors? I have one question that, <coughs> that occurs to me, and I, I don't want to ask it in the sense of, of with, with any necessary insistence, um, but it, it strikes me that uh, some of the Concern and some of the delicacy of this is, is is putting a structure up close to an existing property line, and indeed, uh, three feet is very close. It usually becomes smaller than that, and if someone decides to put a property line fence in later, it becomes effectively almost impassable. But that's a different thing. Um, I, I wonder, you know, in terms of its its standing as a obstacle, I guess I would ask this question, but also for the context of Omar Circle, which I believe has, to my recollection, has some amount of, some frequency of carports as opposed to garages. If you guys had considered that at any point as a less uh, substantial uh, presence that would give you cover for car and... Uh, um, I, I, I did uh, consider that, but um, I reject it because I, <clears throat> I want uh, to be able to have storage space in the garage that uh, will help me get some things out of the house that you know that's that's there now. So it will. I'll have uh, some shelves back there. Most garages have some place where you can put your tools and things. I don't have that. Oh. Okay. And um, the. Uh, you were saying that you had observed uh, mainly um, carports, well, there, but there, there, there are only about there. three. Yeah. The rest of the houses on on the circle and around it that were built in that plat mm -hmm. have garages, yeah. and my, so there are only there may be three, it may just be two. Oh. Okay. okay. Other questions? It's kind of in line with the questions we we're supposed to ask ourselves. Are there <laughs> other solutions? So I wanted to ask you if you've considered other solutions. Okay, any discussion amongst us? Well, uh, you know, I guess I, as I'm looking at this and understanding the purpose of it, yeah, I'm, I'm hard pressed to think of another alternative. I mean, frankly, even a carport would essentially encroach on the side setback anyway. Um, 
you know, short of somehow looping the driveway into the backyard and sticking a garage in the backyard, there's no other access to the property. So it's not as if you can come in off an alley in the back and, and do it that way. Um, yeah, so I, you know, uh, well, well I, I appreciate that we have setbacks, side setbacks for a reason, though I can't quite remember what they are. Uh, and that, that going from 10 to 3 is dramatic. It's a 70 percent loss. Um, I'm not, I, don't, my, I can't see an alternative myself. Well, what she said, she wants a garage where she doesn't have to shovel snow, and no, the carport no, is going to leave the snow there. That, so well, that's, that's she true really too. needs a garage there, that's and right. she wants exactly. to go directly into the house right. without opening up with the winter. So I think, I think what she said is reasonable. Yeah. No, I, I mean that's that's the conclusion I'm coming to. We, we, we did discuss, you know, other options as far as putting the garage in the back. But because of the layout in the house, it it just wasn't right. working for and her to be able to go in and out. Cover up a lot of windows. Right. But yeah, I mean, we're flying. And the, yeah, it work. Right. right. And the other side of the house, you'd have the same issue with the side setbacks, right. and it wouldn't lead into the right part of the house. Um, right. More further questions or discussion? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's, that's the way that works. Right. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, whether the property owner's predicament feasibly can be obviated through some other method other than a variance? No. 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 Okay. Whether the existing conditions from the, which the variance is being sought were self-created? No. 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 And whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would, would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance? Yes. 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 And so do we determine that after we've weighed all these factors, the property owner has shown practical difficulties so inequitable as to justify granting a variance to the property owner? Yes. 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 Okay. Judy, do you want to take the formal vote? Indeed. Con. Yes. Perry. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. Okay. okay. Very standard. <laughs> Okay, so that was two of them. Um, and then, uh, thank you for coming down. Yes, Just thank you. time to avoid the snow. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's not going to snow, right? I mean, now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> no more snow. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, on our agenda, we have something called agenda planning. What does that mean? That's where Tamara says, I've got these things in the pipeline, or I don't have these things in the pipeline. Oh. What you got, Tamara? I have nothing in Bye. the pipeline Very right back. now for, for the <laughs> next week. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, still, you'll still need to get a zoning permit. I'll time when you're ready. Okay, yeah. so we are. You have so yeah. When do I do that? How, any time. Yeah. Okay. Can she pick I that up that uh, tomorrow mm -hmm. when you're here? Yeah, I'll be here in the afternoon. Okay. Um, God willing. Yeah, I plan on being here. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I don't have anything for next month's meeting at this time. But Hey, you're doing all right. Thank you. Can we, can we just go ahead and set a tentative date in case there is something that comes up? Then that way Tamara knows if she doesn't have it before a particular time, we can't hold it that month because I we can't get the notices in. That's cool. So if you guys... Just pick a Wednesday in September and say, if you got to, here's our date, and then I can let you know uh, within. About the week of the 15th. Which would be. Um, so that would 17th. be the 17th is out for me. Other than that, oh, and the, the 10th. So 10th, 17th, I could do the 20. 24th is Russia showing up. Maybe that's not so great. Let's do it the 17th. Struck by lightning. <laughs> I can't do the 17th. Okay. That's too bad. Yeah. Does it have, have to be Wednesday? It does, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. everybody else is scheduled. So I could do the 24th, I think, at this distance. But that would be the you only... You can't do the 24th? I would... It's just, yeah, this is heavy, it's, heavy guilt here. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> it's Rosh Hashanah. Oh. The sun set, so I shouldn't do the 24th. But I mean, I might come back. And it's before know. we you fall back. I don't know. That's you, could probably, you could probably do it without me. I'm sure we could... 
I think with that much advance notice, we are probably okay yeah. for a quorum. I'll, I'll go ahead and send that out as a tentative. That's the 24th? 24th. Okay. okay. You might make it by sunset. You, you I mean, what you yeah. to, no, 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 because we, well, we have to do that by then. Since yeah. Danelle is not here, we are, you know, <laughs> record time. <laughs> Actually, we are. Yeah, right. <laughs> we should start tracking this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, anything else, Deborah? Uh, no, I think that that's all I have for today. Uh, do we want to prolong this just for kicks, or should we just <laughs> <laughs> is there a motion to adjourn? Well, I'll move to adjourn. Do a second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.